Hello, my name is Stefan Schwarzer. This lesson is about specific methods in regenerative agriculture. Let's have a closer look, although only as an overview on what best practices can be used. Keep in mind the relevance of soil life and soil fertility for the health of the plants and the five fundamental principles of REGEC. The learning objectives for this lesson are to understand practices which protect soil and enhance the soil life, to get insights into advantages of mixed cultures and increased diversity, and to learn about benefits of holistic approaches such as market gardens, agroforestry, and mob grazing systems. Without going into detail here, this slide shows a collection of RECAC practices, but there are many more. Some of them are well known and established, some are rather new and very innovative. We'll cover many of these in this and following sessions, so stay tuned. We need a different relationship with technology. This picture, an advertisement by Deutz Farr, is telling us a lot. The warrior and feel the power take command. In other words, subdue the earth, fight and dominate it with a force of 500 horsepower. This means that we lose contact, the relationship with nature, while we need to sense, to feel and to understand what is good for nature and how we can work with nature and not against it. This is also to be understood not only as a measure for the farmers. This is a social orientation that we must change. We consumers and designers who do not work directly with the soil also need a change towards more connection and relationship with nature. We are all part of the process of shaping how agriculture is carried out. We have to reduce the axle load, that is, no longer drive with large and heavy equipment over the field and on the sensitive soil, because this compresses the soil, deprives the soil organisms of the space to breathe and the plant roots of the space to grow. We have to learn to drive across the field with lighter equipment in order not to endanger the soil and soil virtuality. From the lesson on soil life, it has become clear that plowing has a negative impact on soil and soil fertility. Therefore, the conversion to a shallow or conservative soil cultivation is necessary, which works at a depth of only a few centimeters and disturbs the soil life as little as possible. Even better is a way of working that no longer moves the soil at all. These no-till sowing processes virtually no longer interfere with the soil. A grown pre-crop is bent and pushed down with a so-called roller crimper, which is attached to the front of the tractor. The plant now continue, continues to try to supply the stems with energy from the roots, but they can no longer properly photosynthesize and are thus weakened more and more until they die. If the pre-culture were cut, then it would sprout again, which is not desired. At the back of the tractor, a narrow crack is now drawn into the thick layer of mulch that has formed and a little bit into the soil in which the seeds are deposited. This approach optimally protects the soil. The result looks like this. The soil is totally covered by the dead pre-crop and protects the soil from drying out or from rain. By composing the material, the soil life is constantly fed. As interesting as this approach is, it has so far been used almost exclusively by conventional farmers in combination with genetically modified and glyphosate tolerant crops such as soy, corn and cotton. In organic farming, this is still not very common. Some farmers are experimenting with it. Significantly more research, development and exchange is needed here in order to use this approach more broadly. We want to nourish the soil life. In this case, it is the harvest residues that we cons consciously leave behind in the field. 
which at the same time protects the soil and feeds the soil life. Yes, this approach is increasingly in competition with other uses of crop residues, that is, the use of straw as energy producer, for example. An important topic is undersowing, that is, crops that are supposed to cover the soil but should not compete with a main crop and, in the best case, support it. There are many studies from the 80s and 90s that show that such a combination, especially in connection with corn, really brings advantages. This knowledge has disappeared over time, thanks in part to the ease of use and effective use of pesticides. But we should go again into this direction, because it covers the soil, it nourishes soil life, it provides food and habitat for insects and birds, and much more. Here is another example of undersowing in cereals. The most important resource available to the farmer is sunlight. As one American farmer puts it, I am in the sun harvesting business and I never want to spill sun. And who turns off their photovoltaic system in the summer months when the sun shines the longest and the solar radiation is at its highest? Since plants release a good part of their photosynthesis products into the soil and thus increase soil fertility, every farmer should ensure that this process does not come to a standstill for several months. Under sowing supports this at a time when cereals are no longer photosynthesizing. And when the grain is threshed, we repeat ourselves here, the field is protected and the soil life is nourished. By now it should have become clear that the soil should be left exposed as little as possible. But unfortunately, the summer fallow or the winter fur is still common practice. Fortunately, an increasing number of farmers are now opposing this, because they see the positive effects on soil and soil fertility of cover crops and green manure. In addition, they offer insects and birds by way of the undersown, a diverse living and feeding space. Insects are often seen as the bad guys in agriculture. However, there are studies that show that for every harmful insect, there are 400 to 1,700 positive or neutral ones. This clearly means that the harmful insects are significantly outnumbered and if we can develop systems that provide a high variety of insects as a habitat, then there will be significantly fewer, fewer problems with them. On the other hand, it also means if I try to control a harmful insect by applying insecticides, then this can be fatal for a large number of other insects, which could normally positively influence my system. This diversity is being promoted by such edge or intermediate flowering strips. A really good and sensible mixture, especially with perennial flowering plants, promotes the population of beneficial insects and can even increase the harvest yield accordingly. But be aware, the combination of flowering strips with fields that are treated with insecticides or other chemical pesticides and or are threshed at times of a day when the insects are on the field, among other things, means consciously accepting the death of many living beings. Protecting the soil in a vegetable cultivation also means growing many crops in mulch. Here too, the mulch layer protects the soil over the summer and into the autumn. In addition, the plants are happy about the additional nutrients that end up in the soil through the composting process of the mulch layer. The plants form many fine roots directly at the mulch soil transitional space, because moisture and nutrient supply are optimal over long periods. Meanwhile, there are mulch planting machines that allow planting into the mulch. 
Mixed crops are known from the home garden or vegetable cultivation. But this is also possible in the field and is increasingly being used. This is possible as here with, for example, oil and grain. Widely used are the combination of nitrogen fixing plants such as peas or lentils with, for example, grains. Studies show, for example, that millet and flax support each other in the presence of mycorrhiza. These mycorrhiza are not present in the left container. In the right, on the other hand, the soil has been inoculated with them, which leads to significantly improved growth behavior of both cultures, whereby here the flax actually even benefits significantly from the photosynthesis products of millet. The mixture of different varieties is also possible in vegetable cultivation. Here too, the plants can complement and strengthen each other. Some grow upwards, others in width, some root straight down, others rather wide. When well staggered in height and time, significantly higher yields can be achieved on the same area, while also increasing soil health and completely dispensing with plant protection products. The system of market gardens follows the principle of soil conserving to soil promoting management with a high degree of diversity. On small beds, standardized in width and length, only light equipment is used. The heaviest is a single axis milling machine of something like 120 kilograms. Otherwise, a variety of simple handheld tools, some operated with cordless electric screwdrivers to achieve high efficiency despite manual work, are available. Principles in the system. Work the soil as little as possible, leave it covered as much as possible, diversity of cultures and more. This beautiful picture comes from the Ferma de Laguna Blanca in Argentina. Characterized by soil erosion, this farm was bought up and converted to contour line work, including the use of a variety of crops and constantly growing grass strips. Contour line parallel working means a significant reduction in soil erosion. The grass strips catch any runoff water and soil particles and give soil life the, the possibility to penetrate into the fields again. Agroforestry is a resource building method that is slowly gaining momentum in Europe. The combination of fields and trees offer many advantages. Trees provide wind protection and improve the microclimate, which will be partially advantageous in times of climate change. They draw water and nutrients from deeper soil layers and release part of it back into the environment. They reduce soil erosion through their root system and the solid grass strips. They provide habitat for birds and insects. And, among other things, they produce fruits, nuts or wood, which we can use. The combination of trees and agriculture is possible as here in arable farming vegetable cultivation and also on meadows and pastures. Holistic grazing management or mob grazing is a form of grazing that has been copied from nature. Where the wildebeest herds in East Africa move densely packed over the savanna because the lion threatened them from the outside. In mob grazing, the animals often only stay on a fairly small plot for a few hours or only one to two days before they move to the next plot. It then takes many weeks until they are allowed to return. The rather short stay of the herd on the plot means that the grasses are not completely bitten off and thus they can directly carry on with photosynthesis and without major energy losses. Some of the plants are trampled down which in turn leads to a mulch layer that protects the soil. The longer resting phase gives the vegetation the chance to grow really strong again, increasing strongly soil fertility as shown in many cases in Germany, Europe and the world. The integration of livestock and arable land 
is an important measure to increase solvatility in the most direct and natural way because these biodigesters running around and have formed a symbiotic relationship with the grasses over millions of years. The fermentation process in the stomachs of the cows and the excretions are the best fertilizers for the soil. In this way, cover crops and green manure can be eaten by the animals, which has led some farmers to completely dispense with glyphosate, as certain farm animals such as sheep eat even the most stubborn weeds. A few days after the cows have moved over the pastures, the chickens are happy about their legacies, because the cow patties are now teeming with insects larvae, which excite the chickens. In doing so, they scrape apart the very locally formed fertilizer, which leads to more homogeneous distribution. In between, other animals can be kept, which in turn have different feeding needs or demands than the cows. In this way, significantly more animals can find food for a short time on the same area and at the same time increase soil fertility. Water retention is an important issue in times of climate change. Here in the south of Portugal, a desolate landscape, the construction of a few dozen lakes and ponds and the planting of many trees has led to a revival of the region. Groundwater supplies can be replenished in this way and water is increasingly available even in dry seasons. Springs below and even above, which had dried up for decades, are flowing again. Of course, diversity is also the key to the healthy growth of meadows and pastures. While in the US, on the far left of the picture, Kentucky bluegrass is sown, which only forms an extremely short root growth, the plants of a diverse meadow usually root several meters deep in various ways and thus offer completely different growing conditions. Of course, this is also associated with higher resilience and plant health. Here we see the soil of two fields, one on the right, the other on the left side of a road. Same soil, equal basic conditions. But the one on the left has been conventionally worked with plowing and monocultures and chemical fertilizers and use of pesticides. The one on the right has been worked with methods of regenerative agriculture. The difference is clearly visible and self-explanatory. Humans' contents are far apart and thus the water infiltration rate, water storage capacity, nutrient storage capacity, soil structures, etc. And thus, of course, completely different requirements for plant growth, among other things. If we use the methods of regenerative agriculture outlined in this lesson and others, then we can, can achieve many win-wins. We can reduce greenhouse gas emissions and even extract carbon dioxide from the air to store it in the soils and wood of the trees, which in turn can mitigate climate change. We develop drought tolerant soils, build up soil and soil fertility, achieve increased harvest and improve nutrition. We can revitalize local economies and promote biodiversity. And there are many other win-wins which could be added here. But as a start, this should be enough of an insight as well as an outlook on the method, methods and the possibility of a lively agriculture. Thanks for watching this lesson.